Hello. Bodie, stop licking. It's a glorious day finally. A few days of rain. And my mood's been up and down, up and down, like a lot of us have, you know. A lot of us get that, up and down, up and down. So I haven't been feeling great, not really, um, for a little while. But you know, it could be a lot worse, so that's good. And uh, when we're talking about when we're talking about mental health issues and stuff like that, obviously there's um, more often than not, there's no rhyme or reason as to why we suddenly, Bodhi, suddenly our mood drops. Bodhi, you. He keeps licking every 10 seconds. Yeah, and we can say, well, this has happened and that's happened, but things happen anyway, and we normally process them, cope with them, deal with them, brush them off. Um, whatever you know and uh, maybe sometimes they do get the better of us when it's combined with a lot of other things but it's um, it is sometimes just as it is you know no real rhyme or reason no just lately I have lost a friend uh, sadly to leukemia and although we weren't in contact, you know, I do think about him and, you know, that's, it was awful, obviously. And then we lost the lovely, wonderful Sinead O'Connor and um, bless that woman, you know, I keep thinking about her as well, you know. Her son Shane committed suicide just over a year ago and um, I know she really, really struggled after that. And she's had mental issues for ever, really. So, uh, although, as I'm making this, it was um, her funeral yesterday. Uh, and the family haven't released the, um, you know, the reason why she died. I think probably we're, we're all aware, really, of what happened. Might be proved wrong. Um, of course, when they say that, you know, especially a star or whatever, you know, a singer or football or whatever, when they've died, we're not always told the truth. And I actually know that for a fact. I know of um, two people that have died. Uh, doesn't matter who, but famous-ish people, whatever. And you look in, and I know they've said there were natural causes. Na what do I say? Natural, natural causes, and they weren't. But you know, for whatever reason, uh, that's what the family want people to think. That's what the press want people to think, and that's what we're told. You know, so that's fine. So whatever we're told about Sinead, we have to accept. Because one thing in life we don't do is um, question. <laughs> you know the. Um, the cause of death. Bode, wait there please. Just wait there. Right, come here. Come here. There's a good boy. No, come with me. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you know. So we're never going to do that, are we? Question as to why or how. Anyway, so... Um, this way please, come on, this way. So really, although this is sort of a mental health video, it's more a self-care video. Because I've been waiting for a few days to come out. Because we all do different things, let's kind of class the self-care. For me it's being in nature. Come on my love. There's that woman coming behind me. Because he's getting interested in her bloody dog. Oh no, she's gone up the road, that's good. So this always works for me. 
I say works, it's um, it just lifts the mood, you know, the serotonin levels and everything else is just lifted and any worries, concerns, problems and what have you, we can leave them somewhere else, can't we, just for a little while and that's how it works. But a self-care day, you don't have to get out in nature. I would recommend it. But um, that is the whole thing with a self-care day, is that you do stuff to look after yourself that can change the way you are, or the way you currently are thinking about a particular thing or a number of things, or nothing. Your mood is just low. Bode, come on, for some unknown reason and uh, we want to change it and really so how we change it for me it's doing this you know it's a number of things but doing this because I'm thinking about this the smells the sounds the birds feeling of the warmth sometimes on my skin saying to Bodhi don't lick <laughs> seeing that he's quite happy cool air on this left arm right now I can hear the air in the trees. Can you hear that or not? And the trees are just gently moving in that bit of breeze. There's that beautiful dog. And I know that he's happy, as I've just said. It's quite blowy. Not here, where I am, but certainly up above. And that's nice. And then we've got leaves and bits and bobs dropping down if you can see them because uh, although it's August you know it was not going to be long before we're into um, autumn or fall as the Americans call it so uh, we're dropping some leaves we're going to have a little carpet of leaves and then hopefully we get some beautiful colours soon and that will increase whatever moods I mean at the time. So yeah, being out in nature for me does a lot. It's also uh, physically rewarding, obviously. I could have sat indoors on the computer today, but I've done that for the last couple of days because it's been raining, so and look at that sky now. Glorious, I tells you, glorious. So yeah, self-care. For me, self-care means also putting myself first a little bit. Because um, I do love people and uh, I want to be there for friends and anybody who's having a bit of a rough time. But just lately, you know, I've got a friend in hospital. I've got three friends um, who are quite depressed for a number of different reasons. And I've got a friend who's possibly going to lose his wife, you know, in the next maybe few months. So, uh, although I want to be there for those people, and I am, sometimes I just take a back seat like today, you know, I'm talking about them now because I'm making a video, but I wouldn't normally even be thinking about these people. Not today. Today is a self-care day. You can't take care of yourself if it's full of other people. So. Even to smile at the camera is um, a form of self-care. You know, I've got nothing major in my life really, so why is my mood a bit low? Well, I just don't know. So um, if I can smile, 
and maybe you can fool the brain into thinking that you know things are pretty good and actually they are booty you have to remember to count your blessings you have to think what am I grateful for not what doesn't work in my life but what does work in my life what is working for me in my life what does make me feel good in my life and we need to do more of that and obviously I love painting I love reading writing just generally surfing the web I like to watch uh, documentaries sometimes I like to get out in nature I like to play with my silly little dog So I do all of that and more and often when the mood has dropped a little bit I turn my phone off and I don't go on the internet for a day or two because uh, sometimes it doesn't feed me, it doesn't bring me good things and uh, it's better to to not know about these things sometimes not interested in war, politics, all that old rubbish, especially when, you know, your mood, you've only got certain energy, our energy levels, our physical energy levels are one thing, but we also have mental energy levels, and we need to recharge our batteries, recharge our brain, and uh, that's by stepping away, sometimes. And if it's a struggle to get outside, like it was for me today, it was easier for me just to sit indoors today, which I very nearly did. But if it is a struggle, when you've done it, if you can do it, you're always, always rewarded. Always. And I feel um, my mood is lifting just a, a little bit, and that's great. I knew it would do. Hello, beautiful dog. So if you can get outside, get outside. I might have said that before in a video. It's also good to listen to yourself and to know yourself as much as possible, really. You know, um, I let things build up a little bit and I didn't realise. And then just a few nights back, I sat there and uh, I'd watched something on YouTube that wasn't um, great. It's great for me on one level. I'll be honest with you, it was about... I know this is a bit strange to watch, probably, but I'm, I'm very much into the brain, how it works and why, and why, why and how people are so different and they cope with some things, some people do, some people don't. I'm just really, really interested in uh, the psychology of, of man, you know, of the human, it's all right, Bode, uh, of the brain. So I ended up watching, I watched a number of um, short films and true, true life things and a couple of little documentaries and then one of them was um, about a boy I think he was 16 who committed suicide but they had his family there his mum his dad and his older brother and um, what had happened was I think he'd his girlfriend dumped him he'd lost his job and a couple of other things went wrong and uh, he kind of reached out to his brother and said, you know, I'm gonna, gonna end it all. So his brother went to meet him and he was in a car park. His brother didn't know what to do. His brother was very young, about 17 or 18, didn't really know what to do. And um, 
said, well, let's have a race, you know, from one level to the next, you know, empty car park at night. And uh, they did. And one of them won, and then the other one won. And it was all great. And on one level, the boy in front of his brother just ran like the wind and he jumped the barrier and that was it. You can imagine. That was in front of his brother, so it was awful. And uh, anyway, so I watched that because I'm interested in how people cope with all sorts of different things and the reasons why and, and you know, what do they put in place and what learning techniques do they have, uh, what they learnt from, whatever experiences, what can they pass on, can we learn from their experiences and it goes on and it goes on. I've always been interested in that sort of thing. Come on mate. Ah, going out to the open now a little bit. See that? So that had ended, that documentary. And I realised after a while I was just sat there, just sat, kind of, I suppose I was letting it wash through my mind, I'm not sure, but... Oh, it's warm. Feels warm after a couple of uh, cold, wet days. So yeah, so I just sat there feeling quite deflated and I thought, oh, that wasn't a good thing to watch really. Although it was, you know, because it's, uh, as I say, I just enjoy getting to know all those different things I've just mentioned. Um, but I sat there for quite some time, 15, 20 minutes, which isn't really like me. And I thought, what's going on, you know? And I thought, how am I feeling? Well, I wasn't feeling very comfortable in my head. Hey, no, come on, liquor. Mr. Liquor. So I thought, well, I wonder why I'm feeling a bit down, you know. And I thought, is it because of my mate Pete? Possibly. Uh, but I normally deal with things quite well, so it's kind of a yes and a no thing. Uh, I thought, is it because of this? Is it because of that? But really, it's just a combination of many things and also things that we don't understand and we never will. And uh, it could be lots of small things. Maybe I haven't drunk enough water the last few days. Maybe I got pissed off with the weather just raining the last few days. Maybe I've been eating some crap the last few days. Maybe I've been aching a lot in the last few days. <laughs> and it goes on and it goes on. So that's all something. But it's, uh, as I said, there's no real rhyme or reason. And I do think things through. Bird. Oh, there you are, my friend. Hello. Well, I'm not sure where we're going, but we're going somewhere. <sighs> So, come on, babe, babe, baby, dee, baby, dee, baby, do. There you go. Didn't know what your name was then. So, whatever a self care day looks like to you, do that and do it often. It could be treating yourself, couldn't it, to a takeaway or, you know, a pastry or a cake or something for the local shop. Uh, not cooking tonight, popping in and seeing a friend, doing a hobby or an interest or something that you like to do in life. Making a phone call to somebody, 
uh, whatever. So I've got a couple of newish things to deal with uh, physical but also mental health for me. Look at those beautiful hills across there. Lovely. Absolutely wonderful. Beautiful, peaceful place to live. Uh, so yeah, a couple of new things. As you know, I've had a massage. I have deep tissue massages. And I have done for many, many years. And it's a matter of finding the right person. And sometimes a, one particular person is better than the other. So in the last couple of months, I've found somebody new. She's very experienced, but she's just branched out on her own. So I've been promoting her business a little bit. Just with uh, a few friends and a few people that I know in the locality and a few Facebook things and stuff like that. So I've been trying to push her business and she is getting more and more clients, which is lovely. And she's great. As I say, it's deep tissue. But what I particularly like, particular, come here, Bode, come here. Uh, where am I going? This pass that way, that way. I've no idea where the hell I'm going. Anyway, it's all good fun. What I particularly like is that she does a lot of them just do these set massages and that's fine. You know, um, I want to say back sack and crack there yeah, I've said it back sack and crack of course they don't massage you like that back sack and crack so a lot of them do these um, these set massages which is it's not what I've said it's neck shoulders and back that's one and another one is a full massage and you know that sort of thing what I particularly like with this, my new one, is she does a 60 minute, what they call a personalised massage. So you choose two areas on your body. So, my neck, shoulders and upper back is always giving me jip. So I always have that massage, so that's my number one. Oh, pardon me. And then, because I have osteoarthritis, I have my, really mostly it's my ankles massaged, but she does everything, the toes, the feet, the, the sole of the foot, top of the foot, right the way up, calf muscles into your knees. Go this way, please. So, um, yeah, a personalized massage. It's my neck, my shoulders, my upper back, and then my feet and leg area, which is lovely. So, been having that done maybe it's about three months, four months even, I don't know, probably three months. And uh, I'm loving it. It's good for your physical health, obviously, but it's very good for your mental health. You know, an hour off, an hour to not think, an hour of being treated in a although it's very professional it's a very i don't know what could we say but it's just um a self-care you know it's a way the human touch is an amazing thing but it's just a way of, of taking care of yourself even more so that's that one and tomorrow as i make this now of course you won't see this for a while but uh tomorrow as i'm making this i'm seeing somebody with a great reputation who is an osteopath because I've got a, a problem in my neck this side with a bone and it needs adjusting probably my neck needs stretching and you know whatever and clicking and clacking 
Uh, but it is painful, it does keep me awake at night. Again, that can affect the mood. Because, as I say, it's lots of little things maybe that affects the mood. Um, I want to paint my nails as well, I've decided. Got nothing on my nails apart from a bit of hardener. Uh, because again, that's just something that I do and it kind of lightens the mood sometimes. I don't know why, but it does. Uh, I smell a patchouli as well, because that lightens the mood. I don't know why, but it does. And you know, it's all those sort of things. So yeah, this woman has got great reviews, wonderful reviews. And she's moved from a place a little bit far away for me to a place that's much nearer, a purpose-built place. And, um, you know, it's a proper little, um, proper little place. There's a receptionist, there's her and one other, um, both osteopaths. And apparently she really knows her stuff. Now, I have been, for a couple of months, I did pay to go and see a chiropractor. And I have to say, they were absolute shite. Hello. <laughs> I love you so much, Bodes. Yes, I do. I know. Oh, which way, Bode? That way? Okay. Just turn this camera off and then back on. I do that with the camera because um, I think it records for 20 minutes or whatever and then turns itself off. So if I just turn it off and turn it back on, then I've got a fresh new 20 minutes. So, uh... It was a lot of money to go and see the chiropractor in the first place. It was like 90 quid. And um, they said that involves your chat and all the rest of it. And then hopefully you'll be treated on the first um, session. So they call that the first one. They call that the first session. So um, anyway, we had a chat. And she understood what was the problem. She said, well, lay down on the couch, let me have a look. And she sort of fiddled around and fiddled around and stroked my neck. And uh, that was it. Rubbish. And I said to her, is that it? You know, she said, oh, yeah, it's going to take a while. I said, why would it take a while? And she said, well, yeah, you've had it quite a long time. And, um, you know, we don't want to cause you a lot of pain and a lot of grief and... I said, well, I'm already in a lot of pain. Anyway, so I booked up to go a second time, which was then, I think, 50 quid. And a uh, little butterfly. Wonder what you can see. Probably not a lot. Uh, it's all the same woman. And obviously this time is not a chat, but it's getting on and dealing with the problem. Only she didn't. There was a lot of namby-pamby touching and stroking of my skin. And I said to her, you know, I do have a massage, regular massage, and uh, deep tissue, I like a lot of pressure. And she said, yeah, I don't want to give you too much pressure because, you know, it might do this. I said, well, let's try, you know. Anyway, she didn't. So, Probably like a fall. I booked up for a third time. I shouldn't have. But I uh, went in. And she literally, on my neck, she was going like this. And I said, what are you doing? And she said, oh, I'm just feeling the muscles. I said, you can't feel the muscle, can you, by touching the skin? Muscles are underneath the skin. She pressed a little tiny bit harder. Anyway, she said, oh, well, that'll do for this session. And I said, well, that'll do you know I won't be coming back and she said oh I'm sorry to hear that I said you haven't done anything you know I've paid for three sessions plus the fourth session hello butterfly plus the, the the first main session which is I think 90 quid or 95 quid I said you haven't done anything and she said well we have to be careful anyway I said well you know, I've heard better than uh, than that. Lots of people have gone to chiropractors and they found the problem. They go creak, crack, bang, and they're fine. I said, I won't be coming back. So that was that. 
And then I started looking around, then I found Katie from there. Katie is the woman who currently does my massages. I say currently, she always will, I think. She's so good, I'm really pleased. Um, as long as she's in business, I use her. So, uh, yeah, that was that. And then I found uh, this other woman who I'm going to tomorrow who's an osteopath. So maybe it was my fault, the chiropractor, in my view, isn't very good. But according to the reviews and everything, the osteopath is fantastic. So, you know, we'll see, I'll let you know. But it's all about self-care and you know, if self-care involves a massage or deep tissue massage or some bone manipulation or your feet being massaged whatever you know another thing i have is i have a lady about every six weeks she comes and cuts my toenails what do they call it is it a um you know i know you're shouting at me i can't hear you a podiatrist they used to call them a, well they used to call them something else. Anyway, so this woman comes out, she cuts me toenails and she files my skin down and uh, she checks if there's any problems and rectifies that as much as she can and uh, puts some cream on at the end and just gives my feet a very gentle two minute massage and they feel amazing, always. So I have that done every six weeks and I have done for the last well, for a few years, four years, because uh, I do struggle with my osteoarthritis in the back. It makes me really, really struggle. So, uh, self-care. It's all about self-care. And it doesn't have to cost you money. You don't have to pay for a massage. You can go back and have a coffee. You can come and sit in nature. Just sit and be. Close your eyes. Listen. How are you feeling? you know and leave nature when you feel better and sit on a bench or a log or something so it doesn't need to cost anything and you can go home and maybe watch your favorite telly program if that's what you do maybe buy a cake on the way home if you know that's what you like to do uh, you know whatever self-care maybe just have a, a long bath instead of a short shower. Maybe do that. Or maybe tomorrow, get up, don't bother having anything, don't even wash. <laughs> Stay in your dressing gown all day, watching rubbish on telly, or listening to music, or just chilling out. Or draw a picture. Think about something. Find your way through your self-care because there's always a way if we if we choose to think it through and being in nature being close to water being with all this green being out in the fresh air feeling Mr. Solar face on my skin knowing that I'm happy my dog's happy well you know I'm happy-ish I'm happy but my dog's happy we're going back for a slurpee in a minute and it's all good. I've ordered my shopping, so that's due this afternoon at four o'clock, four to six. So in that, I've ordered a couple of little treats and one of the treats is uh, profiteroles. Surprised I could say that. Again, it's self-care. I haven't had profiteroles uh, many years now, <laughs> but I just decided I'm going to have half a dozen profiteroles and if I eat them all tonight then that's great if I don't then I'll eat them tomorrow whatever um, Friday as you know is my takeaway so I'm looking forward to that so it's Wednesday as I'm making this so I'm having a snacky type tea or dinner tonight and then a snacky type tea or dinner tomorrow night um, which involves salad and you know whatever and uh, probably profiteroles who knows so uh, yeah, get all my shopping in. So that's a, a good thing to get done. It's a weight off my mind, not that I worry about it, but you know, it, it's a thing that's done. So that'll be done tonight. 
uh, and then tomorrow I'm really looking forward to going and seeing this osteopath see what she can do come on my lovely um, so yeah that's tomorrow I'm looking forward to that and then probably paint my nails up who knows and then Friday is the takeaway so it's all good so it's all self-care 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 all the way along <sighs> yeah but this has done me good today so wonderful I do get this and I do I've got dysthymia right which is long-term depression but I do get mood swings you can call them it's not like bipolar or something like that I don't go to each extremity I um you know I just <laughs> probably just same as anybody else but I look at I don't want to go into a deep depression because it's it's a really dangerous place for me and it's not very nice and um come on my love uh So I have to be very careful having dysthymia I can go into like a double dip depression they call it and I'm not going to this time because um, I'm not at that level and I'm doing everything that I can which is all about self-care anyway so I got a couple of video and no, I haven't I'm, oh, but I've got a couple of pieces of art coming up tomorrow night which is as I'm making this, it's Thursday the 10th. So have a look at my eBay if you're interested in any art. And then in 10 days time on the 20th, I've got a sale. And that is, I think I've got five or even six, but probably five pieces of art all going up at a very, very reduced rate. In fact, two of them are going up for just five pounds each. So have a look, the 20th to the 30th that is. And at the same time, I'm reducing my, both my books. So it's a proper Ishi art sale. So it's books for a few days and five pieces probably of art for 10 days. But it all starts on the Sunday, I believe it is, the 20th. So if you're interested in art or my books, we've got Christmas around the bloody corner, <laughs> you know, get in now, get a couple of books or whatever and uh, well that's it really just look after yourself in the best way that you know how you are number one in your life you cannot give anything to anybody if you're not okay and there is a saying it's okay to be not okay very true it's really true in my case massively true I am allowed to feel like this I am allowed to feel not okay for a day or two if it goes on uh, more than a week or, or two then obviously I I need to get on and deal with it which I, is what I'm doing uh, but it is okay to not be okay and it's okay to put yourself first and then you can give to others once you are okay but you cannot give from an empty cup if your cup is empty you know you've got to top that up now with nature with music with your chinese with your toenails being cut whatever you know and i'm topping my cup up so that i could be there for others which is an important thing in my life okay anyway thanks for listening and uh i am okay and I will be okay. I will be better. Take good care and we'll speak again soon. Be well. Be as well as you can be. Ta-da.